Okay, it's launch trajectory and countdown net. Pad is clear. 10, 9, 8. Launch auto sequence seven, has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go for launch. Separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Hello everyone, it's Saturday, March 30th, and you're looking at a live view of our Falcon 9 rocket awaiting its 5.52 p.m. Eastern Time launch from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. My name is Zachary Lupin, and I'm an avionics reliability engineer here at SpaceX, and I'm joining you from our headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Welcome to our live launch coverage of the Eutelsat 3060 mission. Today's launch marks SpaceX's 30th mission of 2024 and the 325th overall mission to date. Today is also the seven-year anniversary of the first reflight of an orbital-class rocket. Seven years ago today, a Falcon 9 launched SES-10, marking the first time in aerospace history that an orbital-class first stage was successfully reused. And on that seven-year anniversary, we currently have Falcon rockets vertical on all three of our launch pads at Cape Canaveral and Vandenberg. Eutelsat 36D is the first of three Falcon launches scheduled to lift off from both the Space Coast and the West Coast today. Later today, Starlink will launch from our neighboring pad at Space Launch Complex 40, followed by, by a third launch at Pad 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Eutelsat is a GeoLeo operator with a fleet of 35 geostationary satellites and an overall constellation of more than 600 satellites in low Earth orbit. Eutelsat's 36D is a geostationary or geosatellite that will be positioned 36,000 kilometers above Earth. Eutelsat 36D will be replacing the Eutelsat 36B satellite and will provide video services to customers in both Africa and Eurasia. We'll have more to share about today's mission later on in the webcast. So at T minus 9 minutes and 25 seconds, let's learn a bit more about the Falcon 9 supporting today's mission. Falcon 9 is a two-stage rocket that is both designed and manufactured by SpaceX for the reliable and safe transport of people and payloads into Earth orbit and beyond. It is the first and currently the only orbital-class rocket capable of reflight. The entire vehicle stands at 220 feet, 229 feet tall, or about the height of a 21-story building. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage, which is also referred to as the booster. The booster accelerates the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere and into space using nine Merlin M1D engines, eventually separating from the rest of the rocket. Now, that number nine in the name refers to those nine Merlin engines that power Falcon 9's first stage, and those engines are named after the Merlin, which is a species of Falcon. The photo you're seeing now are these nine Merlin engines, just like the engines responsible for getting today's payload to orbital velocity. Now, not only is the first stage the largest part of the rocket, but it's also the portion of the rocket that we attempt to land for future reuse. And today's booster is flying for its 12th time today, having previously flown six Starlink missions, four separate satellite missions, and CRS-26. Today, we're planning to land on the drone ship Just Read the Instructions, which is currently stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, to date, we've landed Falcon 9 272 times. Reusability is very important to us as it allows us to refly the most expensive parts of the rocket, which in turn drives down the cost of access to space. Above the first stage is the second stage, which has a single Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine that ignites after the first stage separates. And that second stage is what will carry the Eutelsat 36D payload into orbit. And located above the second stage is the payload fairing, which is the large barrel structure with the pointed nose at the top of the rocket. At 17 feet in diameter, the carbon composite fairing protects satellites on its way to orbit, and they get jettisoned approximately three minutes into flight. The fairing halves supporting today's mission are both flight proven, with one half flying for its ninth time and the other half flying for its fifth. And after separation from the second stage, both fairing halves will return to Earth and will be recovered by our recovery team. 
The Eutelsat 3060 satellite is currently safely stowed within those fairings. Now, based on the Airbus Eurostar Neo platform, the all-electric Eutelsat 3060 payload will bring enhancements to areas of coverage as well as uh, performance improvements. Now, as that T-clock approaches zero, let's learn a bit more about this payload and its journey from Europe. At T-minus 5 minutes and 10 seconds, Falcon 9 is currently tracking no issues and the payload is healthy. Falcon 9 has been loading propellants since the T-minus 35 minute mark and will finish loading at around T-minus 2 minutes. The range is ready to support and weather is currently green for our mission today. However, if for some reason we do not launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. Coming up shortly, the transporter erector, or TE, will start to uh, open its clamp arms and retract away from Falcon. Now that TE is the large truss structure that you see there next to the rocket. First we'll see the clamp arms open around the second stage, and then the TE will begin to pull away from the rocket slightly. Back lower has started. At T-0, ground hydraulic systems will pull the TE even further away from Falcon 9 as it lifts off. And there you can see those clamp arms retracting away from the second stage. Now the first stage is connected to a launch mount at the base of the TE, but the structure is hinged and will track away from the vehicle in preparation for launch. You may also hear the TE referred to as the strongback from the launch team. We use the TE to roll out the rocket to the pad and raise it to its vertical launch position. The TE also routes the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and payload until Falcon 9 goes on internal power and clears the pad. And there you can see that strong back starting to recline away from the Falcon rocket. At this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Both first stage and second stage should finish loading propellant about a minute apart from each other, with the first stage finishing up in just a few moments from now and the second stage finishing up at around the T-2 minute mark. Stage one mark, close up. And there you heard that confirmation of locks loading completion on the first stage. Now the white clouds you see around the vehicle is the chilled gas above the locks tank, which we vent overboard to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. And when that water comes out into the Florida air, the humid moist air condenses into clouds and water. Coming up in about 20 seconds from now, we should hear confirmation of stage two locks loading completion. Now at the T minus 60 second mark, Falcon 9 will go into startup. And this means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown. And then just inside of the T minus two second mark, we'll light the Merlin 1D engines for liftoff.
the Utilsat 36D payload. Stage two locks load complete. And there's that confirmation of stage two locks loading on our Falcon vehicle. Uh, it is now fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. The Utilsat 36D payload continues to be healthy, and the Falcon 9 team is currently tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather is still looking green, and the range is ready to support our T0 of 5.52 p.m. Eastern. And with that, we're proceeding into the last few minutes of terminal count. Ground gas close out. In just about 15 seconds, we should hear a confirmation that Falcon 9 is in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. And there's that confirmation that Falcon 9 is in startup. Lastly, we're waiting for our launch director to give the final go for today's launch. Go for launch. And there's the launch director's final go for launch. So uh, we are set to launch the Eutelsat 36D payloads. Let's sit back and watch as Falcon takes the Eutelsat satellite to space. 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, ignition, and lift off of Falcon Nine. Go you go fast, go Falcon. Vehicle is pitching that range. At T plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Launch Complex 39A, carrying the Eutelsat 36D payload to orbit. Now, during the rocket's ascent, we will be tilting the engines, the technical term for that being gimbling, and that'll turn the rocket horizontally in what we call a gravity turn. The vehicle will still be going up, but now we'll also be headed horizontally away from the launch pad. We've also throttled down the engines in preparation, supersonic. in preparation for max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure. And this is when the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of aerodynamic stress as it ascends through the Earth's atmosphere. Max Q. And there's that call out for max Q. Now, the rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. So keep an eye on the Stage 1 telemetry, which is located at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Coming up in just under a minute from now, we're going to have three events in, quick, in quick succession, starting with Miko, or main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, and then second engine start one. Miko is where we shut down all nine Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. This then gets followed by stage separation, which is when the first and second stages of Falcon separate from one another. And that'll be followed by second engine start one, or SES one, where we light the MVAC engine on the second stage. So keep an eye out for all of these events, which are going to happen in rapid succession in about 25 seconds from now. State separation confirmed. State separation. And there you heard and probably saw each of those three events, Miko, followed by stage separation, and then SES-1.
Coming up in about 30 seconds from now, we'll have fairing separation. The fairings are currently attached above the second stage and they will be jettisoned away and will fall back to Earth. Fairing separation confirmed. And there's that confirmation of fairing separation from the second stage. As a reminder, we'll be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves today once they fall back to Earth with our recovery vessel, Bob. It's T plus three minutes and 55 seconds into today's mission. The next major event coming up will be at the T plus six five minute mark, which you'll see, you should be able to see on the left hand side of your screen. And this will be the first stage entry burn. Now to start that entry burn, we will be relighting three of the Merlin M1D engines, starting with the center engine known as E9, followed shortly after by engines E1 and E5, which is similar to pumping the brakes to slow down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow the booster down to reduce re-entry forces, which then helps us recover and reuse the first stage. Now, during that, re that entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but we're also still moving really fast, and this causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also known as the rocket's plume. And this deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle surface. Now, that surface comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little more on the outside of the vehicle. And oftentimes, prior to launch, you can actually see that soot on the first stage. Domino trajectory. Good call out there of nominal trajectory. As a reminder, on the left-hand side of your screen is the Falcon 9 first stage, and on the right is the second stage, which is currently carrying the Eutelsat 36D payload to orbit. In just under, under a minute from now, we should hear confirmation of entry burn startup on the Falcon 9 first stage. And currently on your screen right now are some beautiful views of our second stage as it carries the Eutelsat 36D payload to orbit. As a reminder, today's booster is flying for its 12th time today, having previously flown six Starlink missions, four separate customer satellite missions, and CRS-26. Coming up in just about 10 seconds, we should hear Stage one entry burn startup. And there's that stage confirmation one, of stage the Stage 1 entry burn on our Falcon 9 first stage. Stage one entry burn shutdown. And there's confirmation of completion of the stage one entry burn for our Falcon 9 booster, which is on the left-hand side of your screen. Now, reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical... Nominal trajectory. And there's that call-out of nominal trajectory. Reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical scientific research. And the Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting today's mission performed this entry burn for its 12th time. The Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust each during ascent and descent. And at liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power. Now on the second stage, the one MVAC engine with a much wider nozzle is optimized to 220,000 five. Second stage in terminal guidance. Good call out there. The MVAC engine. Stage one transonic. And there's a call out that stage one is transonic. Coming up in just about 20 seconds, we should hear confirmation of landing burn for the Falcon 9 first stage. Stage 2 FTS is saved.
Airbag shut down. Stage one landing burn. And then we heard two callouts for MVAC shutdown and landing burn start on our Falcon 9 first stage. Nominal parking orbit. Landing leg deploy. And there we had amazing views of our Falcon 9 first stage. Stage one landing confirmed as it landed on our drone ship, just read the instructions in the Atlantic Ocean. This landing marks SpaceX's 289th recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. We also heard confirmation of nominal orbital insertion. Now we still have one more burn of our second stage engine before we're ready to deploy UTILSAT 36D today. In a moment, we'll be going into coast and we'll see you back here at the T plus 26 minute mark for the relight of our, of our MVAC engine. So until then, sit back and enjoy the space jam.
Welcome back to our live launch coverage of the Eutelsat 36D mission. We are currently awaiting the relight of our second stage MVAC engine coming up in about 30 seconds from now. This burn, called SES2 or Second Engine Start 2, will last for just over a minute. Now, just to recap, we've had a very successful mission so far. Falcon 9 successfully lifted off from Launch Complex 39A at 5.52 p.m. Eastern, carrying the Eutelsat 36D payload. Stage separation occurred about two and a half minutes into flight and was followed by the successful landing of Falcon 9's first stage on the drone ship, just read the instructions. Then at about the T plus eight minute mark, we had a successful second engine cutoff or SECO-1, and that was followed by confirmation of good orbital insertion. MVAC startup. And there's that confirmation, confirmation of MVAC startup, or uh, second engine start two, on our Falcon 9 second stage. As a reminder, this burn is set to last for just over a minute. Once we hear confirmation of SECO2 a few moments from now, we'll then be entering about a six minute coast phase. Impact shut down. And there's confirmation of MVAC shutdown on our second stage. We're now just waiting for confirmation of good orbit. For now, let's learn a bit more about Eutelsat 36D. This satellite is currently on its way to an orbital inclination of 36 degrees east and will eventually reach an altitude of 36,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. At this position, the geostationary or geosatellite will provide video services to customers both in Africa and Eurasia. We'll now show a short video from Eutelsat taking a closer look at this new satellite's capabilities.
We're now awaiting payload deploy of Utilsat 36D from Falcon 9 second stage, set to hop happen at the T plus 34 minute mark. Now to recap, we had an on-time liftoff at 5.52 p.m. Eastern time from uh, Slick uh, 39A at Cape Canaveral in Florida, and everything has proceeded nominally in the launch sets. Stage separation occurred at about the two and a half minute mark into flight, and that was then followed by the Falcon 9 booster successfully relighting its engines for entry and then touching down on our drone ship just to read the instructions in the Atlantic Ocean. This was the booster's 12th mission and landing, having previously supported six Starlink missions, CRS-26, and four additional satellite missions dating back to fall of 2022. At about the T plus eight minute mark, we had a successful second engine cutoff, or SECO-1, and that was followed by confirmation of good orbital insertion. And that was the first of two burns, two, first of two burns of the second stage engine, and that second burn was completed just a few minutes ago. The vehicle is now coasting with the payload attached, and we're just a couple of minutes away from spacecraft separation. Just as a reminder, the Airbus-built Eutelsat 36D satellite is a successor to the Eutelsat 36B satellite located at a 36 degree east orbital inclination with an altitude of 36,000 kilometers. Eutelsat 36B works in tandem with Eutelsat 36C to support broadcast business for several major anchor customers. Once operational, the Eutelsat 36D satellite will support delivery of over 1,100 TV channels to millions of homes across a vast footprint covering Africa and Eurasia. And with 70 physical KU band transponders, the all-electric Eutelsat 36D will assure all of the main legacy missions of Eutelsat 36B with enhancements to coverage areas and performance. And while we didn't hear a call out a few moments ago, we did indeed have confirmation of good orbit of the second stage. We're currently about 50 seconds away from payload deploy of the Eutelsat 36D satellite from our second stage. Payload separation confirmed. And there we heard that confirmation of payload separation with our Eutelsat 36D satellite. All of us here at SpaceX want to thank our customer Eutelsat for entrusting us with today's mission. Eutelsat is the first launch of today's triple header. Today we have back-to-back -back launches from all three launch pads in Florida and California. In about two and a half hours, Falcon 9 is targeting liftoff from Pad 40 in Florida, and later tonight, another Falcon 9 is set to launch at Pad 4 East here in California. We want to thank the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's efforts across all of our launches, and that'll conclude our webcast coverage of SpaceX's 30th launch of 2024 and 325th overall mission to date. However, if you're interested in more launch coverage, be sure to check spacex.com slash launches for the most up-to-date information. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again soon.